Hey guys, it's Royal Pal Tony Gels TG here, welcoming you once again back into the record room. And on this week's episode, we're following on from the last episode where I picked up the IKEA Obergrenzt turntable for a week of use to give you guys my honest opinion. Now, it's not a review. If you're looking for a review of the turntable, look on another channel. There are tons and tons of reviews of this thing on YouTube. Me personally, I was intrigued when IKEA announced they were going to bring out a turntable in conjunction with the Swedish House Mafia. And to be honest, I'm kind of like a turntable nut. I enjoy turntables. I love looking at turntables. I love watching records spin. But for me, I just thought this is something fun. You know, I, I bet this will be something that will make a fun episode for myself and the viewers. And so... As soon as this thing released in early October, it was pretty much sold out everywhere. But then I got the notification saying that it was back in my local IKEA, which is not local at all to me, but I could go and pick it up. And so on last week's episode, that's what you saw me picking it up and setting it up. And after a week of use, I have many thoughts about the IKEA Obergrenz turntable. Now, before I get into that, though, I'm going to read you uh, some of the information that's on the IKEA website that you need to know when purchasing this turntable. So it's a USB-A powered device, but the power adapter doesn't actually come with it. So it comes with a USB cable, but you are going to need to buy your own plug, which conveniently IKEA do sell. It comes with an Audio-Technica 36000L pickup, so an Audio-Technica cartridge, which is not bad, it's pretty good for a, a cheapish turntable. Uh, and it comes with an RCA cable that has uh, a 3.5mm jack on the end of it. So this won't plug into a regular hi-fi, it's not got RCA connectors on the other end, but you can obviously just buy an RCA uh, cable if you want to plug it into a uh, regular amplifier and this does have a preamp built in so you could plug this into a line input on any amplifier but here it is this this is this is it and as you can tell by the way i'm handling it with my one hand <laughs> this thing is plasticky to all hell it is very very plasticky and in a way does feel a bit like a kid's toy However, it's not. It's turntable. And how does it perform as a turntable? Well, good and bad, I would say. Uh, I'm going to enter some footage now. We're going to show you some footage now of the platter spinning, which you'll be able to tell is wonky AF. This thing just does not want to spin straight. And even when I've used a record weight, it doesn't spin straight. In fact, it kind of lopes to one side. <laughs> So I wouldn't recommend using a record weight with it. But that aside, how does it sound? Was it, was it a good sound? Did it produce a sound that didn't want me to stab myself in the ears? Now, I have had experience in the past with cheap turntables. This retails for $129.99. And in the box, you get the turntable, you get the USB cable, and you get the RCA to 3.5 mil jack. So you will need to get a plug, but once you've got that, you're pretty much up and running. I use this with a pair of Harman Kardon powered monitor speakers. And they're good speakers. You know, I've had them for many, many years. I've used them on various different systems, home hi-fi, computer, um, iPod, iPod, that, that kind of a thing. And, uh, and they've always sounded pretty, pretty good. And I put it all together and Honestly, I was expecting something to be... I was expecting maybe a step up from a Crossley, but I also have a portable turntable, the Newmark PT-101 Scratch, I believe it's called. Now, that is a true portable turntable in the fact that you can actually put batteries in it and take it around with you. This technically is portable. If you want to take the plug and walk around with a power supply, you could do that. Um, that turntable actually produces a really, really good sound. I have plugged it through main stereos before and it, it sounds pretty good. The sound I got from this wasn't dissimilar. It was a far cry better than your average Crossley or uh, suitcase turntable. Much, much better, much better. 
it got to the point where I was, I almost, I almost forgot what system I was listening to. And then that sounds kind of strange. So this, this turntable, I primarily bought this to set up in my bedroom. So of an evening, rather than retiring to the record room as I want to do from time to time, you know, sometimes I like to sit in bed, read a book or just, you know, sit in bed and listen to music. And I don't particularly enjoy listening to digital music. I just, just don't. So I picked up this turntable, set it up in my bedroom and thought, okay, right, well, let's, let's, let's play some, let's play some music. And from the get go, I really was impressed with the sound it produced. It wasn't an audiophile experience by any stretch of the imagination, but it was highly listenable. And something that's really important when you're actually playing music or playing records, it was fun. It actually was fun using this machine. You know, I, uh, the, the dampening mechanism on the arm, it, it's really long. It takes ages from start to finish. And I found myself, you know, I'd be, I'd be watching it just slowly lower. And then the minute it hits the kind of uh, the in groove and then you're off and running, I was like, this is, this is, this is fun. It, it made me smile, which is something that is tantamount to having a good experience when listening to records. You know, a lot of people will listen to records and be like, oh, your surface noise and pops and clicks. And you don't get any of that with CD and digital. Absolutely right. But you also get a lot of compression and nastiness with digital that you don't get with vinyl. But for me, the true test was to take a few different albums that I know inside and out and give them a listen on this turntable and see, you know, see what I thought of them. So the albums I chose, so I've got a few different things here. I've got Miles Davis, Kind of Blue, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Murder Ballads, and John Coltrane's Blue Train. But this is the... So what I did with the records is I chose three records I know very well, but also three um, very different pressings. So the Blue Train, the John Coltrane, this is the mono uh, reissue. This came out a couple of weeks ago, but this is what I would consider to be an audiophile pressing. This is uh, master from the original analog tapes. Uh, cut by Kevin Gray uh, Coherent. This is uh, an audio file pressing. So by all stretch of the imagination, this, sh this should sound incredible. The Miles Davis kind of blue. This is, I'm not actually sure when this version came out, but judging by the sleeve and the label, the inner sleeve and the label, I would say it's a 70s reissue. And the Murder Ballads, this is just a 2LP black vinyl uh, 2014 reissue. Uh, or 2011 reissue. No, 2014 reissue. So, three different albums. A standard double LP reissue. A reissue of the Miles Davis, but kind of like a budget version. And the John Coltrane is an audiophile pressing. Now, from those three pressings, obviously the music is wildly different on all of them. But I found myself really, really enjoying it to the point where I would listen to the albums once I'd finished again and again and again. And I just really enjoyed the experience of listening to this turntable. And in fact, I'm going to play you a direct audio sample now from the recently released. This is Cosmic Music by Beak. Um, and Invader Records have actually given me permission to use a clip of this. Uh, in this video, so you can actually have a listen to a direct audio sample. So we're going from the turntable into the camera. So although there is obviously YouTube compression, you'll kind of get an idea of how the turntable sounds. <laughs> So as I've mentioned before, there are tons of reviews about this turntable on YouTube. There are way more than I initially thought there might be. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tell you the wow and the flutter and the, the weight of the, the needle and, and everything like that. There are other channels for that. What I'm going to tell you is for $129.99, I had a great time listening to the IKEA Overgrand's turntable. I really, really did. 
at one point I thought, well, I'll do the uh, video, you know, not review, I'll do the video and then I'll put it back in its box and maybe put it in my daughter's bedroom for when she's a bit older or, you know, we'll pop it back in the loft, we'll pop it up in the loft, something like that. But no, it's actually going to stay where it has been for the past week in my bedroom. And I foresee me listening to plenty of records over the years to come. And I'm not just talking, you know, beta records I found in second houses. I would listen to anything on this turntable. I really enjoyed the experience. I really had a good time. And ultimately, that's what you want when you're playing records. It's a fun activity. And fun is what I had when I was using it. So... Make up your mind if it's for you. Personally, it gets two thumbs up from me. It really does. It's not the best sounding turntable in the world. It's definitely not the worst. But let me know what you think. You can comment down below. Drop me a line on social media at Record Room Show. And if you're not following us, why not give us a subscribe so you never miss an episode of The Record Room. But until we meet again, stay gold and spin those blackest circles. Music